Nutritionists have been saying for years that you can absorb only 30 grams of protein per meal. Everything above that would be wasted. However, there's been a brand new study that challenges this idea. The study was called the anabolic response to protein ingestion during recovery from exercise has no upper limit in magnitude and duration. They found that after resistance training, a very large protein intake of 100 grams results in a larger and longer over 12-hour anabolic response compared to a low protein intake of 25 grams. There was a dose-dependent increase in plasma amino acid availability and subsequent incorporation into muscle protein. This confirms my own experience as well. For the last six to eight years, I've only had two protein ingestions per day, 30 grams before training and over 100 grams after training. I've never had problems with maintaining or putting on muscle. In fact, I went from 70 kilograms to 85 kilograms using this approach without getting fat in the process. Previously, studies found that 20 to 30 grams of protein maximizes protein synthesis in one sitting and everything else would be redundant. Protein synthesis doesn't appear to increase after 20 grams of protein and 40 grams gives the same response as 20 grams. The excess was thought to be oxidized and excreted. That's why the current recommendations for maximizing athletic performance and to counteract age-related muscle loss has been that you need to eat 20 to 30 grams of protein several times a day. However, However, these studies were based on metabolic tracer studies with protein quantities below 45 grams and over the course of less than 6 hours. This time frame, however, wouldn't allow complete absorption and digestion of much larger amounts of protein such as 100 grams. The new study used 0, 25 and 100 grams of protein after exercise in young adults and used a quadruple isotope tracer to collect plasma and muscle tissue samples frequently over a 12-hour period. The researchers found that plasma amino acid levels weren't very different after 5 hours, but they were significantly higher in the 100 gram group after 12 hours. Myofibrillar protein synthesis in the 100 gram protein group was about 30% higher than the 25 gram group over the 12 hour testing period, and it was about 20% higher in the first 4 hours and 40% higher in the last 8 hours. Thus, the larger 100 gram protein intake has a benefit over the smaller 25 gram intake in the beginning as well as in the end. End. The biggest benefit comes from the significantly longer protein synthesis that stays elevated for a lot longer time. This is quite a groundbreaking study and it does refute some of the old myths about protein intake. Eating over 30 grams of protein in one meal isn't going to be wasted. You're not going to lose your muscle either if you eat less frequently than 6 times a day. And it doesn't make you excrete the amino acids. The study showed that eating larger amounts of protein such as 100 grams is actually better in terms of keeping the protein synthesis elevated for longer, even up to 12 hours. Now, the authors did bring out some caveats. The study was done on healthy young men, and we don't know if it extrapolates to older individuals or women, for example. It's seen that aging causes what's called anabolic resistance, and that elderly people need to eat more protein to reach the same protein synthesis. However, if that were to be the case, then this study actually supports the idea that the elderly people especially would need to consume much larger amounts of protein than just 30 grams. Secondly, the study was done after exercise. Exercise itself promotes muscle anabolism and protein synthesis. We don't know if you would get the same response without exercise. Being physically inactive has been seen to contribute to anabolic resistance. So you have to do resistance training and just eating a lot of protein isn't going to work. And lastly, eating 100 grams of protein means that you're not going to be in a fasted state for a long time, even after 12 hours, because you'll have a lot of amino acids in the bloodstream. However, the authors did find that the, this kind of prolonged anabolism didn't affect muscle autophagy markers in a negative way. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get the prolonged elevation in anabolism and protosynthesis while at the same time maintaining markers of autophagy in the muscle. Overall, I'm pretty excited about this study because it supports my personal experience. Like I said, I've been having only two protein ingestions per day for the last six to eight years, 30 grams before training and over 100 grams after training. I've made tremendous gains and never had problems with building muscle because my training routine is on point. I've written about my approach to intermittent fasting autology and muscle growth in my book called metabolic autology that you can get from amazon other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click the like subscribe notification bell as well might receive stay optimized stay empowered